So we're going to do a, a slightly different practice problem set for the uh, 10.1 about growth. And that's because typically what I like to do in class is kind of have a discussion about growth policies and things like that. Um, for this purposes, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and do modules 37 and module 40, which I think are good practice for thinking about growth rates a little bit. Um, for module 37, this is the FRQ. And I've gone ahead and just kind of uh, screenshotted them out and clipped them out for you here. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at first the check your understanding number one. And that one says, why do economists focus on real GDP per capita as opposed to nominal or real GDP? And that's because real um, is used, used to adjust for price levels. And basically the idea being that that you wouldn't want to use nominal because the price level could be higher and then that would increase the um, the GDP and it, and it would give you a false reading basically. You would also use per capita because it lets you kind of look at um, on a per person basis is used to adjust for population. To adjust for population. And so we'd, we'd say you'd want to adjust for population because each worker that you have in an economy is, is kind of generating more economic activity. So you'd want to adjust per capita to be able to account for that. And then it says, apply the rule of 70 to the, the data in 37.3 to determine how long it will take to each of the countries to double. Um, would India's real GDP per capita exceed that of the US in the future if growth rates being the same? Why or why not? Um, and in short, um, in short, for this problem, China was about 9% a year. India was about, I want to say, 6% uh, per year. I'd have to go back and check. Um, and the U.S., whoops, get off of there. The U.S. was about 2%. And the rule of 70, sorry, let me, let me scroll and give myself some more space here. The rule of 70 suggests that if basically you take 70 and you divide it by the growth rate, that gives you an approximate doubling time. Um, in fact, it's slightly better if you do 72 um, is, is actually what it's sometimes given as the rule of 72. So, um, so we'll do that and say 72 divided by 9 is actually 8. And so if it's 9% per year, then this is eight years of doubling time for China. So China's economic output would double in about eight years from the data that, that we saw. Um, and then if we said, you know, 72 divided by six, and I don't, I don't have my, my trusty calculator here with me, um, but I want to say that that's 12, um, six times, yep, yeah, that's 12. And so it'd be 12 years doubling time for India. And the U.S., right, 72 divided by 2 is 36 years of doubling time. And I think this, this question basically said, um, you know, would, would India eventually eclipse that of the United States? Well, yeah, because it, if this growth rate, 6%, continues, eventually, of course, it would exceed the 2% the growth rates. That's not what a lot of folks would think. Um, the, the thing is, most economies, and, and in fact, that's actually what the third question up here says, although China and India currently have growth rates much higher, the typical Chinese or Indian household is far poorer than the typical American. Explain why. So there's a couple of things going on here in this check for number three. And one is we could say China and India Although they have much higher growth rates, they have um, larger populations, we would say. Um, so they have much larger populations. And, and so we'd also say that they maybe have um, a lower standard of living as a result of that in some cases um, than, the, than the United States. So even though their growth rates are high, we would also say their real GDP, like their current amount, per capita is still far smaller um, than the United States. So even though that doubling time is, is quick, that's what we often see with developing economies. Um, the last question here says, increases in real GDP per capita result mostly from changes in what variable? Define that variable. And what other factor could lead to increased real GDP per capita? Why is this other factor 
not as significant. So we, we can pretty easily, if you, if you spend any time at all with the reading, we can answer the first question and say it's productivity. And it's in fact, it's productivity of labor. And, and that is the amount of kind of GDP per worker is one way to say it. And in fact, economists, others sometimes will, will define it as per labor hour. Um, how much GDP per labor hour. And another factor is population and of resource availability in general. But we would find that it's not as significant because, um, because typically we expect GDP, GDP, whoop, there's a, there, GDP to go up in proportion, proportion, with population. So in other words, if you have another worker, you would expect GDP to go up by, by a certain amount. And so the real GDP per capita doesn't really change. Um, what really kicks off growth is increases in labor productivity, which is the amount of GDP per worker. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the second uh, the second module related to growth. And this is module 40. Now, 38 and 39 are, are very interesting modules. I would, I would encourage you to read them. Um, the practice problems are not as particularly helpful, for, particularly for AP prep, um, and I don't think they're really very, very useful for our purposes either. Um, module 40, though, does a nice job of explaining the visual behind what goes on with growth. So, how are long-run economic growth and short-run fluctuations represented using the PPC? So we're going to start, I'm going to just start with the check your understandings right here. CYU number one, and we're just going to say we have a little PPC, and that's growth, right? And that's the production possibilities. And we'd say that if you go from A to B, that that's just a short run fluctuation. So A to B is the short run. And then from line, we'll say y to z is y to z is growth. Okay, now question number two says, how are long-run economic growth and short-run fluctuations of a business cycle represented using ADAS? And, and like the lecture that I did on this as well, we would say that if you shift LRAS, LRAS, to the right, that's growth, right? So YF1 to YF2, that's growth. But we would say that if you just had a short run increase in say aggregate demand, or it even could be a short run increase in just aggregate supply, if it was temporary, this is not growth. And so that's the, let me, let me answer this question directly. This is the short run fluctuation. Okay, so that's a little bit messier than I, than I probably would have liked had I had been able to print all this out and work it through with you. But um, okay, question two on the free response. So let's take a look at free response question. Draw a separate correctly labeled aggregate demand and supply graph to illustrate each of the following situations and um, show SRAS, LRAS, and AD. And then it says A and B. So I'm gonna just draw these here, here. And we have output and price levels. And for the first one, it says expansionary fiscal policy moves the economy out of a recession. So we're going to start in a recession. So we need an LRAS, AD, and SRAS. And we would say we start at Y1. And expansionary fiscal policy would push aggregate demand to the right. And you'd go from point A to point B. So that's this is this is the one for A. Now for B, investment in infrastructure leads to long-run economic growth. Okay, well this one's going to be more interesting. So if we start out here with LRAS, and then we have SRAS and AD. There's a couple of ways that we can do this. Um, but, but in short, we can just say here the SRAS shifts out to number two, and that eventually the LRAS catches kind of up with it. And so we go from point A 
to point B. Now, what, what probably happens, right? What probably happens more likely is that in the process of moving it out there, aggregate demand probably also increases. And we probably end up with right about the same level of, of price levels as before. This is not something you're going to be asked to do on an AP exam. Um, but you will be asked to kind of analyze it, right? If, if this was the case, you would be required to say LRAS to the right. To the right. But you wouldn't necessarily have to draw it or anything like that. Um, and I don't think it's, it's terribly complicated, but, but you wouldn't have to do that because there's a lot of little variables. Okay, so hopefully this helps you think through some of the ideas behind um, economic growth and the policies related to it. I'll see you next time.